In this introductory Photoshop lesson, I'm going to talk to you about erasers. The erasers tools are located here in your toolbar. Eraser, background eraser, and magic eraser are located here. We're going to talk about each one of these and some of the options that are available to you in the tool options panel. So let's take a look at this skeleton key image here. And it's a stock image that I downloaded and purchased. You can see it's copyrighted. But the best thing about stock images is if you wanted to isolate a subject, in this case the skeleton key, it's a lot easier to do so because very often these elements have been created. This is an illustration. Um, sometimes there's their photographs, but very often they'll have a single color background, white, or in this case we've got a blue background. So it's great for demonstrating what the eraser can do. The basic eraser premise is you have three modes, brush, pencil, or block. The block mode of the eraser just gives you this little square image and it erases a hard edged line in that block size. Pencil mode allows you to choose um, your size pencil. You can even have a very small pencil tip. And it attempts to mimic the pencil tool, only it's erase in pencil mode. And then you have the brush mode. And the brush mode for the eraser tool gives you many more options. You can actually choose the size of your brush and the relative hardness or softness of the edge of that eraser. And notice as I make changes to the size of the eraser, the cursor size also changes over the image window. So if we had a hard-edged eraser, we'll go kind of medium-sized, it attempts to give you this harder edge look. And then if we choose a very soft eraser, notice the difference between the edge of the hard-edged eraser and the soft. The hard edge isn't 100% hard. I mean, it still has some anti-aliasing in there, but the soft-edged eraser actually has more of um, a, a longer or wider gradient as it moves from 100% opacity to transparency. So that's the difference between a hard and soft edged eraser. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can change the opacity of our eraser. 65% maybe 19% eraser, so it's not erasing 100% of the color or image that you see in the image window, so it's kind of magical in that way. And it allows us to erase elements like so. Now, the next mode that I wanted to talk to you about, or the next eraser tool, is the magic eraser tool. So let's return to our original image. And I'm going to actually duplicate this layer. And just to show you what the magic eraser can do, what it attempts to do is select a color and remove everything that is similar to that color in a contiguous or pixels that are right next to one another and it's still going to anti-alias to soften the effect. So we have that selected in this case. 100% opacity, you could again set it to 20% or 60%. Um, let's set our, we don't have to use a wide tolerance in this case because this is just one single blue color. Now imagine if this was a sky that had, we wanted to remove the sky background and you know it had more of a gradient in there that would be the case to increase the tolerance but we could probably even set this to a tolerance of two and this magic eraser is going to work so if I click it instantly removes everything within a two pixel radius of cont contiguous pixels side by side related to that color that we selected by clicking Again, if I click in the blue here, it'll remove the same contiguous pixels there. 
So this is just a way, a quick and dirty way, to remove and isolate elements when you have the case of a very similar tonal range. So that blue was all one color, very similar tonal range. But let's say you don't have the luxury of the same color behind in the background. Then you can use the background eraser tool. The background eraser attempts to remove everything that is similar, but it doesn't remove the foreground element. And it's kind of an interesting thing the way it works. Um, if I have find edges selected and I can change again the size of my brush and the relative hardness of that brush and then I kind of go through and click and drag I can remove the background but as long as I don't move the plus sign into the range of the element I'm trying to isolate it's going to remove the background but not and this is very magic not the foreground element watch what happens when I move the plus sign into the foreground element it's going to think that that's what I want removed and so it's going to remove it so I have to be very care careful to keep that plus sign away from my foreground element as I'm removing the background and then you know as I kind of complete this process I can always choose a larger brush to remove some of the rest of the background and I click hold and drag and just remove that now watch what happens if I select protect foreground color in the options panel and then I choose a foreground color using the eyedropper tool so let's choose this blue as the foreground color and in your tools panel you can see that that foreground color let's see that once again if I go back to the default colors using my eyedropper tool I select the foreground color and now if I have the eraser background eraser selected and protect foreground color selected it is now no longer allowing me to erase that blue color so anything that's in that tonal range of this foreground color blue it's not going to let me erase it so that's kind of an interesting way sort of an opposite way of thinking let's see if we duplicate this layer and turn off this and let's work in this duplicate layer if I have protect foreground color now I can remove the key protecting that blue foreground color so that's the way to, you know sort of an opposite way of thinking and the way that this background eraser tool can be used one other element that's kind of interesting um, with your eraser tool is the erase to history option so the erase to history option works like this let's bring back our original image in this layer and now using the eraser tool I erase and go whoops oh boy hmm I kind of didn't want to do that if I use the erase to history option it's going to bring back what I had just done so it works very much like your history brush tool only it's in your eraser tools and you have on the tool options panel select erase to history now some of the other options here that are available um, is the you can mimic an airbrush mode by toggling this on and off and it's similar to um, you know having a spray can in your possession only your reverse spray painting you can toggle that on and off and increase or decrease the flow of that airbrush or spray can tool and these options here 
are related to people that are working with tablets, such as a Wacom tablet. And it attempts to mimic tablet pressure as that person presses the pin to the tablet. So it actually, you have a little bit more control over the pressure of the eraser with those enabled and you have a tablet. So that's conclusion to the introduction to the erasers tools. And there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this. I just encourage you to experiment and learn on your own.